This Friday morning, one more blast of cold air and snow before it comes to an end. Yeah, take a look at this. A waterfall in Minnesota completely frozen over. I can't even get my head around this. It dropped to 56 degrees below zero there this week, and that is without factoring in the wind chill. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this system, it's been extremely brutal, as we, as we all know, and it's blamed for at least 15 deaths. The snow is still coming down this morning in some areas, so it is not over yet. ABC's Whit Johnson is starting us off in upstate New York. Good morning, Whit. Michael, good morning to you. This lake effect snow not letting up. Take a look at this park, the trees, everything completely smothered. It's up to my knees as I try to walk through it. Some parts of upstate New York getting more than three feet of snow. The deadly polar blast not done yet. This morning, that deep freeze that has claimed the lives of at least 15 people is on the move. Whiteout conditions, a common theme on northeastern roadways where driving was impossible. We've pulled over the car to the side of the road to wait it out. Take a look in front of us. That's all you see. Nothing but snow falling at a rate of two to three inches per hour. North of Syracuse, highways littered with vehicles sliding off the road, stuck in thick snow. Drivers left stranded everywhere you turn. In Patterson, New Jersey, the polar blast freezing that town's Great Falls. A state worker in New Hampshire badly injured when ice from a vehicle five cars in front flew off and into the truck's windshield. The bone chilling temps still being felt across the Midwest. The Chicago River, now a thick block of ice as the city passes the 80 hour mark in these treacherous conditions. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, police telling ABC News they responded to more than 50 accidents in the city on Thursday. Watch as an out of control car slides right into a police SUV. The officers had been directing traffic for a different accident when the driver hit them. Take a look at the consistency of this snow as it hits the ground. It's light and fluffy here, but with these sub-zero wind chills, it quickly turns to ice, making for extremely dangerous driving conditions. Officials are urging people to stay indoors until the warmer temperatures come over the weekend, finally providing... <laughs> They've lived through droughts, decades of highs and lows in the Darling River, but these critically endangered Murray cod could survive no longer. This fish is 100 years old. It's never coming back. This is bloody disgraceful. This video has already been seen close to three million times on Looks social like media. Over an ecological disaster that's now believed to have killed up to a million fish in the Murray-Darling Basin. Unfortunately though, we're expecting the conditions to potentially continue to deteriorate, but unfortunately uh, there's nothing that anyone has been able to point to. No scientists, uh, no locals, no one has been able to point to anything else that could prevent something like this. A new fish kill has further devastated the Darling River in Menindee today, seeing thousands of creatures washed up, dead, and scenes like this stretching along the banks for kilometres. Look at them. That makes me feel like crying again. It's believed to be one of the biggest fish kills in history. This isn't normal. First, I want to take you to Menindee, where Rob filmed this for us this afternoon. Big carp there struggling his last few breaths at the boat ramp. It's the third fish kill now, Menindee, at the boat ramp this morning. Many bony brim. Not to the extent that was uh, last time, but um, certainly uh, a lot of fish down that way as far as you can see there. Yeah, definitely thousands, if not hundreds. wasn't just Adelaide feeling the heat. Records tumbled right across the state from Port Lincoln on the west coast to Wyala and to Port Augusta in the north, all on the same long list of towns where the mercury soared to new heights.
People in North Queensland are bracing themselves for what officials are calling catastrophic, record-breaking floods as torrential rain continues to fall across the region. When we use the words unprecedented and uncharted, we use this for a reason. We have not been in this scenario before. Now those temperatures of course put Adelaide's uh, power network under extreme heat stress. At one point there were 129 blackouts in total, uh, particularly in Adelaide's western suburbs, the power infrastructure under extreme By early this morning, more than three quarters of the U.S. mainland was at or below freezing. It appears the coldest spot today is Cotton, Minnesota, where the actual temperature that's without wind chill was 56 degrees below zero. Even Hell, Michigan, has frozen over. It was 14 below zero in Hell today. Chicago also broke another daily record, hitting 21 below. In Lake Michigan, there is a frozen mass of ice. Drivers facing whiteout conditions in Mansville, New York. And look at this, firefighters battling freezing temperatures and exploding cars on the top deck of a parking garage. Tonight, a bitter blast and an unforgiving freeze. The deep freeze here in Chicago has been relentless. For the past 48 hours, it hasn't been above zero. The wind chill coming off Lake Michigan isn't helping. It's beautiful, even stunning. In some areas, temperatures could be colder than parts of Antarctica. Across the Midwest, the cold shattering records. The Chicago River completely frozen over. On Interstate 81 north of Syracuse, vehicle after vehicle stranded after sliding off the road. Whiteout conditions from lake effect snow making travel impossible. Across the globe, the weather picture is one of fire and ice, bone numbing record cold in the Midwest, fire and record heat in Australia. 120 degrees and hotter this month. What that really means is that fires will be um, uncontrollable. They'll be fast moving. And yo-yo weather cycles. After the deep freeze in the U.S., a 50 degree rebound in some cities within days. Well, it was a rare celestial event on stage, but the curtains really never parted in the Bay Area. A total eclipse of the moon was visible across the Western Hemisphere. Members looked up to the sky tonight to catch this rare astronomical phenomenon. Lunar eclipses can only happen during a full moon, but this one is extra special because it's also a super moon. So how often do all these things come together? Here's an astronomer here at Griffith Park. The super part is somewhat rare. The moon needs to be within a day or so of its closest position, and the orbit's a month long, so that's pretty rare. And then eclipses only a couple of times a year, and you have to be on the right side of the Earth to see it. So tonight is a little bit of a rare event, and folks should enjoy it. They say that it reminds them to slow down and enjoy life. Since it does happen every once in a while, it's like you don't want to miss that, and everyone's so distracted these days. It's like um, you should pay attention to this stuff like this, you know? Definitely nice to get out and experience nature you know I think today in electronics and everything we get all caught up in that so it's nice to get out and, and see things that go on around us. There's a whole night sky up there to be discovered and explored and enjoyed. It's, it's sort of a cosmic laboratory. These pictures are just incredible. We saw an entire eclipse of the moon which then appeared blood red from the sunlight coming from the Earth's atmosphere. It's been happening for years, mysterious boom and flash of light in South Salt Lake. Folks living in the area say it seems to happen at random. The hottest January ever recorded as another wave of extreme heat sweeps across the nation. We're going to begin tonight with the deepening toll of a historic cold snap. 40 million Americans trapped in sub-zero temperatures. The Midwest is accustomed to freezing cold temperatures, but nothing like this. Just before noon today, hundreds of residents throughout Ogden and the surrounding city started reporting what they described as intense shaking and a loud boom. 
It was a boom heard and felt across Ogden and the surrounding cities. One Facebook user said, it shook my house, was like something huge slammed into the earth. The latest complaints concern loud explosion type noises. Gloria Douglas lives directly adjacent to the well site. Yeah, very distinct. You know, it's something that you've not heard here before. And it's loud? Very loud. It's like an explosion. A spokesman for ODNR says that local authorities also did an on-site inspection and found nothing at the site that would indicate a possible explosion. And there, were, there was no seismic activity that occurred. They shake their head and say it was much louder. It shook their house, in fact, the, the boom noise. But there's one noise he's heard in that time he's not so keen on. That's when our neighborhood got shaken up where it just exploded out of nowhere, causing us to kind of go into frenzy. He said he and his neighbors have been living through these random loud bangs and flashes of lights for years. I'm not the only veteran who lives in our community, so it can kind of shake you up when you hear it. He's reached out to the industrial businesses nearby, but no one seems to know the cause. It's extremely frustrating. Leaving him with more questions and answers. Why is this happening? Strange noises from an unknown, unknown location are keeping some Wake and Franklin County residents that rattle windows and wake people up at night. Neighbors along the Wake County, Franklin County line contacted CBS 17 saying they've been hearing loud booms are rolling through neighborhoods that straddle the county line. It almost felt like a earthquake. Elizabeth Elliott says it's been going on for at least two weeks, happening late at night or early in the morning. We actually felt it slash heard it this morning. Um, it's pretty big. Some of her Barham Crossing neighbors are reporting windows shaking. Les Radford says he's heard loud noises in the area before, but this is different. Some neighbors say the boom is so loud it wakes their dogs. I have no idea what it is, but I'd like to know. Very interesting. Well, a spokesperson for the Wake County Sheriff's Department said they had a deputy sit out there a while recently, but he heard nothing. But just after he left, there was another report of the loud boom. The pitter-patter of rain, upset drivers, hurried pedestrians, and tired rush hour commuters. All normal sounds in a bustling Philadelphia. Well, did you hear it? A mysterious boom rocked South Philadelphia. This mysterious boom, though, anything but normal. I was asleep, a pretty deep sleep. It was just this loud noise that woke me up out of nowhere. It felt as if my house was kind of shaking. My dog's ears had kind of perked up. Different South Philly neighbors, same time. 1.52 Tuesday morning, a loud boom rocking South Philadelphia. I didn't have a good idea of what it was. What else could produce that loud noise? Many living south of Washington wondering the same thing. Essentially, I shot out of bed and went to look right outside my house to see if there was an accident because it really felt like it shook my entire house. Um, so sure enough, I didn't see anything. Um, so I took you know to social media just to see if anyone else was searching for this, this loud noise. We did some calling around starting with both the Philadelphia Police Department and the Fire Department. It remains a mystery to them as well. So still a mystery in South Philadelphia tonight. What it was, or is. If we <laughs> or, knew, we'd or, tell you. <laughs> or if it's coming back. Right? I, did you hear it? <laughs> I didn't hear it, but I, I, I keep hearing people talking about I it. I heard it. I was like, You heard it? Yeah, I had no idea what it was. Well, obviously. I'm not alone. No one else go, does I'm not either. going crazy. That's good. Right, That's good. There you go. <laughs> it's, well, what is it? That's the question many folks are asking. She says the mysterious boom shook the foundation of her house and scared a few of her neighbors. We've had it to shake the house before, but not so much. We even have a little dog that jumped. That never happened before. Reported hearing an earth-shaking boom. So this isn't the only time folks have heard a loud boom in this area. We went to the Jackson County 911 Facebook page. Look at some of these comments. Riri, this is the second time. The first boom was last Friday, I think. Look just below her comment. Carla, it felt like the ground shook along with the boom. Check this one out, Manuela. It could be Transformers blowing up. And then Clyde, he said, I heard it too. I live in eastern Jackson County. I thought the neighbor's house might have blown up. Whatever this loud boom is, it certainly has the town talking. Yeah, there's no reports of damage. Nobody seems to know what it was. So it's kind of like very puzzling. I don't know. It could be Ghostbusters. I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue what this is. The mystery continues in Boomtown.